Hi, I'm Fiona Healy from the Bunker and Beyond Breath and today I'm just going to take you through some of the common cheat patterns or substitution strategies the body uses when trying to work the pelvic floor muscles. So if you are trying to work the pelvic floor muscles and in reality you're using some other muscles, you're wasting your time. Um, you have to be squeezing your pelvic floor muscles and not some other muscles and in worst case scenario, some of these muscles can actually have the opposite effect where they're creating a downward pressure on the pelvic floor. So I'm gonna run through these with you and I want you all to have a quick check. Are you using any of these? If you are, you're best off spending your time training yourself out of using these and then building up on your 10, 10 second holds. But if you're trying to work and progress your pelvic floor exercises, but you're actually using other muscles, then you're totally wasting your time, okay? So I'm gonna go through four of the common ones. So the first one I have called the ab clencher. And basically this is when a woman, when she's trying to contract her pelvic floor, she's actually using her abs mainly. And she might start off using her pelvic floor, but then what you will see with the ab clencher is this. So you'll see a kind of a crease across the tummy muscles. And in some cases you'll see kind of dimples coming in here and relax, that'll be your external oblique muscles. So I'm gonna do that again, that's my tummy unclenched. And that's it when I'm overusing my tummy muscles. So that clenching and that grip in here. That has the ultimate effect of creating downward pressure on the pelvic floor. Okay, so this is really important to train out of if you are hoping to go back to impact exercise, jumping, landing, all that kind of thing. If you are very gripped through here, that ultimately can have a lot more pressure down on your pelvic floor. So it's the opposite of what you're trying to do. So the only way of checking for this is up with the tops. And as you're squeezing up your pelvic floor, you shouldn't really notice anything, any change. So that's me squeezing up. You see my voice hasn't changed, my shoulders haven't changed. Nothing has changed here. Train yourself out of this one. This is possibly the most difficult one um, to train yourself out of. Obviously it can be done, but it can be quite frustrating if you have this um, pattern. So you'd have to lift up your top in front of the mirror and basically squeezing up the pelvic floor and try to keep your quiet. And it can be really frustrating because you'll see it coming and you say, oh, I have to stop it. But persevere with it and you can retrain um, faulty patterns like that. Okay, another thing that can help is on an out breath. So pulling up on an out breath, that can kind of help you do it a little bit slower. It can kind of help you keep here relaxed. The second one, which is possibly the most common one actually, is the breath holder. So you'll often see um, women when they're squeezing their pelvic floor, this will happen. So the shoulders will go, throat is rigid, lifting up from here and, and let go of the pelvic floor. Squeeze the pelvic floor and you'll see this again. So how do you know if you're doing that? Um, I, I think bringing your attention to your throat and shoulders is probably the best thing. If you're squeezing your pelvic floor, you shouldn't really need to create any tension up here. There shouldn't, you know, physically there's, there, 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 there shouldn't be a need to generate tension here if you're just working your pelvic floor exercises. So if you notice tightening in the throat, rigid through the shoulders, or just that kind of lift through here, then you're probably going into that breath holding pattern. Really, really common. So looking, or if you find your eyes even dilating and stuff here, is another time you'd see the, the, the breath holder. Um, training yourself out of this is basically trying to squeeze up your pelvic floor on a breath out. So breathe in, and as you breathe out, pulling up the pelvic floor, and that can kind of stop you with that breath holding. And then you're obviously trying to hold the pelvic floor then as you take another gentle breath in and a, and a breath out. And the third one I'd see, again, really common, is the leg gripper, or the butt gripper. Um, so instead of using the pelvic floor, the brain just goes, oh, well, sure, we'll use the muscles around it. And they're usually the bone muscles and the inner thighs. Okay, so if you kind of watch through here, you'll often see the butt gripper in sitting, rise up in the chair. Or you'll notice the bone clenching, or here you'll notice the inner thighs coming together. They'll often kind of come together, I find, the, the, the bum and the inner thighs, and you'll see that going on. Training yourself out of this one, I think you're doing your pelvic floor on a breath out again, so on an exhale, so breathing in to prepare and breathing out to pull up your pelvic floor can kind of help you. I think if you're contracting an in-breath, sometimes you can give give it give too much energy from other uh, areas. So on the out-breath and just slowing it down, I think slowing it down with this one um, can really help eliminate that pattern. And the last one I'm going to show you is the tilter. And the tilter is pretty pretty much used with the ab gripper as well so you you know if you're tilting you probably overusing your abs as well and your legs maybe and breath holding um so 
Mrs. Chinter, if you just see here, I have just have a very relaxed curve in my back. And if I am a tilter, what I'll do is I'll flatten my back as I'm trying to do my pelvic floor exercises. And we don't want that. Okay, so what we want with a pelvic floor exercise is basically that we're lifting up through the pelvic floor, we're breathing, our shoulders are not telling it, our throat is not telling it, our abs are not telling, and our, our bone muscles, everything else is relaxed. Um, when you're trying to improve your pelvic floor strength, or if you have symptoms, it's really important that you are actually working the pelvic floor muscles. So I want you all to just go through those four and just check, our, is that something that you are using as a strategy for pelvic floor exercises? If it is, try and work on training yourself out of it. And if that's not happening for you, booking an appointment with a women's health physiotherapist will be really, really, really worth it.